All right, so ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is we just make sure, because I know it was five classes yesterday, a little cuckoo. Did you see the videos on the five freedoms? Yes, yes or no? Okay. Yes. yes? Did you see the video on the Tinker case? Yes. Did you see the video on how to get to the Supreme Court? Yes. No, we did not. Okay, that's okay. Most classes we didn't. I was talking um, to June and John about history and civics and constitution and what you've all learned. So I want you to just kind of do a little informal poll for them, raising your hand up or down as it applies. And don't worry if you're not raising your hand, you're not making anyone look bad, all right? How many people between kindergarten through fifth grade, all right, spent in social studies class, spent 60 seconds or more learning about the American Revolution? Okay, hands down. How many people have been in a class that have learned 60 seconds or more about the Constitution? All right. How about the Bill of Rights, the Five Freedoms, the Supreme Court? Okay, thank you very much. So that's a little background for you about their background knowledge, okay? So we're gonna turn it over to them and they are gonna work with you to review the Tinker case. No pressure, but uh, 83 and 85 knocked it out of the park answering questions, no pressure or anything. You're not being graded, this is all very informal, but they just wanna kinda know what your background knowledge is, kinda to take the pulse, all right? So, please. Cool, uh, so John and I are going to run this like how our law professors run our classes at Harvard Law School. Um, so that's, you'll still see, you'll kinda get a taste for what that's like. Um, so the case, uh, so it's Tinker versus Des Moines Independent, community school district. What are the facts of this case? So what happened? Yep, go ahead. Um, there was five people, four of them were siblings and then one was a friend of the oldest one and they all wore black armbands to school. Yep, okay, so why did they wear black armbands? To uh, protest the war. Okay, what war? Um, the Vietnam War. The Vietnam War, okay. Um, and then once they wore the armbands, what happened? Yep. They got suspended. They got suspended? Yeah. Who suspended them? Okay. The principal. The principal. Okay. Uh, did the principal provide a reason for why they suspended the five kids? Yep. I think he said it was distracting. Distracting. Okay. Um, and, uh, okay. Uh, and this case obviously ended up at the Supreme Court. Um, how, do you guys remember how it gets to the Supreme Court? A case, yep. Well, it like went through the like first level of court and they lost and then they went to the state one and they lost that one too and then they like applied for the Supreme Court to look at their case and they accepted it. Okay, yeah, exactly. So there's three levels of courts. You said the lowest, that's a district court. So the students sued the school at the district court level. But the students were kids, right? So how did they get to sue? And their parents sued for them. Okay, so they got their parents to sue for them. So that's what happened at the lowest level. And you said that they lost, right? Mm -hmm. So that means that the school won. So then, um, like you said, they appealed to the, uh, the circuit court. Um, so that cuts across actually many states. So I think for Des Moines, it's the eighth circuit. They all have numbers. And I think it covers like four states. So they appealed there, they lost again. So then they appealed to the Supreme Court. And yeah, we can talk a little bit about the Supreme Court. How many justices are there in the Supreme Court? Does anyone know that answer? Please go ahead. Nine justices, that's right. And for the Supreme Court to hear your case, if you appeal to the Supreme Court, how many justices need to agree to hear the case? You guys know that answer? You wanna try? At least five. Four, actually. If four justices agree to hear the case, they will decide the case. But in order to decide the case your way, in order to win the case in the Supreme Court, how many justices do you need to vote your way? Five. No, it's five, right? It's a majority of nine. So in this case, it was seven, two? Two, two, right? So what's the decision in this case? What's the outcome? One. They voted for the kids. For the kids. And what does it mean to vote for the kids? Do they find something? The kids have a right to do what? 
What's the decision here? I'm going to try it over there. Um, uh, it was like, according to the Bill of Rights or the Constitution, they're allowed to protest peacefully and that the, they, them getting suspended was not appropriate. Yeah, that's right. So they use the First Amendment, right? Do you guys know what the First Amendment is? It's about what? Freedom of what? Uh, freedom of speech, uh, freedom of press, freedom of religion, and freedom of assembly. That's right, and petition. So that five freedoms in total, right? So they use freedom of speech to decide that the students in the school, they have a right to express themselves, to wear black armbands, right? So they were wearing black armbands because they were protesting what exactly? The Vietnam War. And why? Because they didn't like the U.S. was involved with it. That's right. So can you guys tell me what's the main argument that the Supreme Court uses in this case? To say, yeah, they have a right to express themselves. The Constitution. The, the Constitution guarantees yeah. that right, right? So uh, why is it important to have a right to freedom of expression? Why do you guys think that? For you as eighth graders, why do you think it's important to have freedom of expression? Please. So we don't feel like we have to fit like a certain type of person. Like we can do what we want with ourselves and we can be who we want. Right. We should be able to have opinions and they shouldn't matter to other people besides just us. Okay. And why do you want to express your opinions? It might be something that you care about or you want other people to care about or know about. Perfect. Yeah. Do you have something to say? No. All right. So can you guys think of arguments on the other side? Why students in a classroom cannot use black armbands? Um, because it might distract or take away from like the learning going on in the classroom. Yeah, that's a good reason. It might lead to something more like distracting to other students. Perfect. We could like we need to get all the kids like in the entire school with everyone. And then Great. Great. You wanna try? I can start an argument. Start an argument, that's a good one. There could be kids that like the Vietnam War and are like for it and they can fight with the kids. Right. So what side here has the best argument? Do you guys wanna Take a guess. Maybe. Your opinion. I think that the kids did because it was in the amendment, and the school was kind of just like it might distract the class. Right. I think they had other uh, kids the right, well, like not right, but had the right to wear the the armbands because it's they're not really distracting anyone. They're just it's just wearing something on their arm, and I don't think that would distract. I think the kids were right because they have a right to express what they believe and the bands weren't really like that distracting, just like another like article of like clothing. They also they didn't do it like loudly, they did it peacefully, like so it didn't distract anyone in the like, school. Would you guys be distracted by black arm bands? No? Mm -hmm. Alright. So let's talk a little bit about the Tinker test. So this is the test that the Supreme Court applies to this case, to decide the case, all right? So do you guys know what the Tinker test is, maybe? It was in the video for like 30 seconds. Yeah. Did someone? So the Tinker test, remember, is can you use the Tinker case to get you out of a jam, to get you out of a problem? I think, is that my correct or am I wrong with That's that? Right. Um, if you have like a problem with like authority, like just test to see if like you, like if you have rights. Yeah, that's right. And how do you do that? First, you have to check if by expressing themselves, the students have substantially interfered with the work of the school. Then you have to check if they have interfered with the rights of other students, right? So if you interfere with the work of the school or with the rights of other students, then no will, right? 
So that's the Tinker test. Did did we do the silly Miss Darman story about the kid dancing? Yes. Okay, so just to kind of so let's say a kid is in my class or in this lesson and learns the Tinker case, the Tinker test. Let's just say the kid really wasn't paying attention and just kind of saw what he or she wanted. Let's just say the kid Monday goes to Miss Darman's, you're taking a French or a German class. Kids wearing an outfit with strobe lights, hires a DJ to play techno music, and starts dancing on the desk, right? Miss Darman calls him out, kid won't leave, he's in Mr. Wrigley's office. When Mr. Wrigley or Mr. Gonsalves says, what are you doing? Can that kid say, the Tinker case applies. Can the kid use the Tinker case or can the kid not use the Tinker case? Because this is really important, all right? So lots of, oh good, so in the Miss Darman story, I think really registered you picturing that happening. Yes? He can because he's being very <coughs> distracting and he's not really protesting anything. So he's not protesting and if you were taking an exam, would that distract you? 100%. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, the ticker test, it's one or two. It's not one and two, correct? One or two. Yeah. One or two. That's right. Good, Good distinction. <clears throat> and or two. Yeah. And or, yeah. I think we can move to the debate. Maybe. Oh, that's great. Awesome. Yeah. That's fantastic. Okay, so what we're going to do is, now we're going to get to the debate. Appreciate you guys all participating in that. Can you turn to the back of the second page and you will see the word activity class debate? Okay. Looks like this. All right. Okay. So I am going to set the stage. Then we're going to give you a movement break. And then we're going to form our teams. All right. So I, someone in the first class was brilliant. They were like, Mr. McGrady, can this be the North Andover Middle School? Yes. In this hypothetical fake example, this is the North Andover Middle School. Okay. North Hanover Middle School lunch, uh, building, handbook, all that stuff. Okay? All right. At the North Hanover Middle School, John, Mary, Beth, and Chris want to campaign in favor of starting school two hours later so students can get more sleep. So the, the class time would start at 9.50 instead of 7.50. Okay? So they decide that to make their point, they will do three things. First, they will come to school on Monday morning wearing pajamas. Second, they will um, they write up a petition and pass it around from table to table at the cafeteria at lunchtime for people to sign. Can you do me a favor? Can you underline, um, pass it around the table to table at the cafeteria at lunchtime? So underline table to table at the cafeteria at lunchtime. That was the suggestion of a student, not academics, okay? Third, during lunch, they bring out a microphone and an amplifier and they sing a protest song over and over. All we are saying is give sleep a chance. All three of them are suspended for their behavior. Can you underline third during lunch, during lunch, during lunch? Both cafeterias, ladies and gentlemen, 8th grade and 7th grade. Uh, one of the students wanted to note that 7th grade classes are in session, 8th grade classes are not. Okay? So now you're going to make a decision. Do you want to be on the student team where you argue why the First Amendment should protect all three things the student did? Wearing pajamas, petition drive, and the song or the government team arguing why none of these things are protected by the First Amendment and why what these students did is different from the students uh, in the Tinker case, all right? So now what we're gonna do in terms of movement is I'd like you to take all your things, everything, binders, everything, and I want you to stand right over by the clock. Just take a nice little walking break. Stand over by the clock, take everything, take everything, all right? And we're doing great on time. Jim and John are doing really well. And I don't mean to be rude, but I am going to be checking my phone to see if the afternoon crew is texting me. All right, all right. All right, can someone tell me in yesterday's press, jokingly, 
Which did we say maybe instinctively would be the least popular of the two? By the way, this side of the room will be the government team, school, and this side is going to be the student team. Yes? Why? Relate with. You relate with the students. Yeah. So we did say that there were going to be some brave souls that were willing to take the unpopular view. And so far in the first two classes, a lot more kids are stepping forward, which is making the three of our job very easy. So who here is willing to take one for the team and debate on the principal government? Whoa. Oh, wow. I did not expect that. Oh, jeez. All right. So here's what we're going to do just randomly. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you're going to go sit down when I point to you. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Wow. Holy moly, we created a monster. And if it's okay, would you guys mind? Uh, who really wants to like go after the school? And So please sit down if you really want to do that. If you have no opinion, no worries, okay? No opinion, no worries. So we have 10 people here. How we're doing here? Oh, you're all filling it in for me. All right, that works. I'm cool with it. That looks all right, yeah? So here's the deal. So here's what we're going to do. Do either one of you mind coming on this side so it's not box side? Yeah. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, a couple things. This is like a law class. So obviously when you are doing mock trials in law class, you, do not, you are not on an island separated from your team. We have furniture that will allow you to move things, whatever you need. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to move your desks and chairs so you're all facing one another. Circle, square, whatever. And then you all have two experts who are going to facilitate and guide you through this. So just so we're clear, this is going to be the government and this is going to be the students. So move your desks and June and John will be joining us. We should make an L and use this as the other side of the square. Yeah. Like, oh, 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 like, like we'll, 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 we'll make a square, but that would be the other side of the square. So you guys You guys just move back a bit, yeah. Guys, don't worry about the gas. We'll move everything back. Just get comfortable. Don't keep it. That's fine, guys. Oh, you guys can move closer. Any way you want, guys. Oh, yeah, move back from here. I want to move your desk closer. Somebody call in the middle. And then we'll take They're taking this very seriously. You know, guys, leave an opening so if someone wants to talk to the group, they can step in the middle. No, no, no. All right, time out. Time out. Way, yeah. Now that we're all in the that we can get out of it. Everyone, listen. Excuse me. You obviously in a prep debate, you normally have a lot of time, but we're going to take advantage. I'm going to give you 10 minutes working with your law student to come up with an argument. You are going to go to the page that gives you space that says organize arguments. If you're the kind of person that does this in your brain, you don't have to write it down if you don't want to, but if you're the kind of person that needs notes, you're allowed to bring notes up here. I'm gonna give you 10 minutes. You're gonna be facilitated. At 10 minutes, you are going to do the debate, all right? So we're gonna do that now, all right? Go. Okay. So, does anyone have anything? Ladies and gentlemen of the debate. Don't we start like that? Okay. Yeah, totally. I understand why the teacher is getting very strong. It would have been different if we were doing it in the middle of the class. Okay, there's a good and bad. I thought they already were done talking. Okay, I was gonna say, I'm going to go ahead and just come up with a question. Thank you, and you're about to go ahead and just say, I'm going to go ahead and just say, I'm going to go ahead and just say, I'm going to go ahead and just say, but seventh, seventh grade was in classes, so we're disrupting their classes. Well, are we almost closing the door?
Wars. <laughs> we're on the eighth grade side. We're not near the seventh no, grade. No, no, we're, we're, we're on the eighth grade side. We're on the eighth grade side. Hypothetically, we have money for multiple microphones. Um. Also, with like the wearing pajamas, sometimes I wear like the same thing as yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but in we this case, why they are trying to do it with wearing the pajamas? So and then like the petition is uh goes under like their um ability to or their like freedom to assemble or petition. So I think and uh and press. They're not fast for doing class protests. And also, everything in this is like a very peaceful protest. They're not like lunch. In, they're not like trying to sort of fight or anything. Great, that's a good argument. We have rights to do We're uncomfortable. We're not disrupting that much. We're not the right. like start like a fight or something like that. Uh, the create a substantial interference with the work of the so if you apply the tinker text, well, if you had to make the case, it, how do you do it? Think about that. So I say yes because okay. And let's go one by one. Wearing the pajamas. And yes, that's, it's peaceful. It's okay, right? And it's not distracting. It's just okay. clothes. And what about the second one? I don't think it interferes with because one kid might be wearing pajamas, another kid might be wearing a sweatshirt, the work of the flat pants, and it doesn't really. It's just early. It's just early. Why do you think I had you underline that stuff? Because it's early. Does that help or hurt your case? So it's good that we did it? Yeah. Teachers always say, let's do pressure on you. Like, you can talk to your friends. I'm sure they've already done because they're all. Did you guys talk about the seventh grade academics? Oh, you're beautiful. Not even though it should be the seventh grade. We're not forcing anyone to sign it. If you don't want to sign it, we'll just mess it around. Yeah. So the third case here is very hard to defend. Yes. How do you do that? What's an argument for using an amplifier and a microphone during lunch time? To get the word out? But do you really need an amplifier and a microphone? No. So why are you worried? I mean, it's tired. I think it's very loud. Yeah, it was just the kids who led the protest. All right? We wanted our voices to be heard and we wanted to, like, keep going. And but also we wanted yeah, like yeah. The, like if we were just passing around a petition wearing pajamas, that doesn't speak to the teachers or the people who are like choosing that like, choosing school strikes earlier for the moment they bring in that second level. Now they're not like about it. Why is it not like a distraction? So we have one argument for each situation, right? Wearing the pajamas, what's our argument? So you can choose if you wear the jam or not. So writing a petition, pretty easy writing. And about the song then, using the one you're allowed way to do it. We're trying to express our opinion. So who's going to argue our case? So as an argument, we can have one for each argument. So I can do the pajamas. I'll do pajamas. I feel like Matt is very good at arguing. Does anyone feel like they have a really, really strong case for the amplifier? Because in my personal opinion, I think that one would be the worst. I'll do that one. So you can do a good I'll do the petition test. I don't really care. We can do the slide together. Yeah, like we could like straight up. I can do that pajamas. I'll do the petition. You can do the pajamas. You both do. Yeah. Do you guys have any ideas for that? I feel like so it's been. I have yeah. ideas for the rebuttal. You apply the rebuttal, but that's for later, right? Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. share that. Now. Yeah. Yeah. We can talk about well, that. they might they might say that it's against the dress code to wear pajamas. 
So what would we say against the people like that? It depends on what the pajamas are. Because if it's like sweatpant type pajamas, I don't see that breaks the color. There are no pajamas that are like neon yellow. Um, neon yellow. I know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
right, listen up, listen up. As promised, as promised, I always get you out of here on time for lunch. The law students, we're gonna have lunch together and then they need to jet back to Cambridge and we're gonna have three more law students coming in. So just to be respectful to that, uh, we are going to have the students go first. Is that what we did? All right, so ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, here's what's gonna happen. I don't care if it's one, two, three, everybody. I'd like the student representatives to go up to the student podium now, please. All right? Okay, so, couple things. I'm gonna obviously let the law students talk about this, but just a couple things. Um, in a courtroom, just like debate is, even though they're gonna do an amazing job, we do not applaud, okay? And secondly, I wish I had a little more powerful gavel. This is lame, okay? <laughs> but someone out of order, that is definitely not cool. And I know you're all in the moment and you're loving this, but, but you can't be talking and strategizing. The judge would call you out of order. I had a young lady in the first class that was really fired up and I had to call her out of order and I kind of felt bad, but I think the class got the message. So I am gonna time you so it is 60 seconds. And you want to focus on your arguments only. And I'm just going to first ask, are you all ready? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. All right. So, and, whoa, wait one second. Please bring up something important. So we thought it would be fun to actually have you guys do it like you are making an argument in the court. So when you, when you're a lawyer and you're presenting an argument, you start with what's behind you. So good morning, may it please the court. That's just procedure, you have to start that way. So whoever speaks first on either side, please start with that statement and then go into your oral argument. Mr. McDevitt, quickly. So in this, like, uh, 60 seconds. 60 seconds, are we presenting each of our individual arguments? Three, the three, you're dealing with the three issues. Okay. You with me? Yes. All right, are you guys ready? Okay, everybody, order in the court. On your mark, get set, go. Good morning. May it please the court. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, <laughs> for the petition during lunch, it it follows the First Amendment, freedom to petition. It was during lunch. Lunch is where we socialize. We are not forcing anybody to sign it. If you don't want to sign it, you don't have to. Just pass it on. If you do want to sign it, then you're following us to make school two hours longer. Um, so for the pajamas, um, our argument is that they're similar to normal clothing and they don't break the dress code, if they don't overly distract students, and they don't take away from learning. Um, and if, like in the Tinker case, they were able to wear the black band, and if they can wear the black band, then we, are, we can wear PJs, because they're kind of just clothes, basically. Uh, so, singing our song in class, we were just trying to get our word out peacefully. It wasn't during the teacher's time, so it wasn't like we were doing anything, and everyone was already talking, so we had to use, like, the microphone to try and get the word out and be louder. And also, um, an example is, it is like singing the birthday song. We sing that all the time. They let us do that. We even sing it during class. And no one says a birthday song is disruptive. So, how is this much different? Time. Thank you very much. Oh, that, that was a little over, but that, that's great. We're not gonna, we'll applaud later, but you can take a seat. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> the government, the government and school group, uh, please approach and go to your podium. No, we're going to go to your podium. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get started. So we're, we're, we're going to give you guys, nice job you guys, we're going to give you 60 seconds. You're addressing the three incidents, uh, the tinker test, all that stuff. Um, so I'm going to tell you to go. Are you four of you all set? Okay, go. Good morning, may it please the court. Um, I'm going to be talking about the song incident. 
and uh, for what she said about how it's like the birthday song, when you're bringing two massive amps into a lunchroom and singing it for how long is lunch, like 20 minutes, I think that's different than like just normally talking or like normally singing for 10 seconds. It's a pretty big difference there. And also classes going on in seventh grade area, which is pretty much like right next to the cafeteria. So that's gonna disrupt like tests. I know personally I get aggravated if someone's talking during a test. And that could just be really annoying and it could make people fail a test. And I think that's it. Uh, I'll be talking about the pajamas and um, if like you guys are only like your group of people like wearing pajamas, then the entire like school would want to wear pajamas. <coughs> like distract kids during like yeah. you know like tests and stuff during class because like pajamas are distracting because sometimes it has like you know like characters and like weird colors. Um, I'm gonna be talking about petitions, which I think is the most like distracting issue in this whole situation. So first of all, like passing around petitions during lunch will take up so much time. Like passing them all around and people are gonna be talking about them. They're gonna be eating their lunch and all of a sudden there's a petition coming around. Oh my god, what's it about? Should I sign it? Are you signing it? Oh she's signing it. Like that's gonna be taking up time during lunch and then like next thing you know lunch is over and you didn't get to finish your lunch. You're gonna be aggravated all day, you're gonna be hungry, you're not gonna be able to perform as well as you usually do. Time. All right, you can all take a seat. Now everyone can applaud yeah. for that invite. So, so, so obviously, we're barely getting started on this. We will dedicate Monday to talk more about this. So I had a student in one of, I think the second class, and I heard him say something under his breath that, that he probably didn't want me to hear, but I actually think it's a, it was a pretty good comment and I didn't take offense at it. So he said something to the effect that doing debate earlier was great, but I think the debate instruction I got today was a little bit better, and I was not offended by that, and you will not offend me. Did anyone feel like the debate instruction today was a little bit better than the one that you had done a couple weeks ago? All right. So why why did you why the debate instruction why why do you think this you felt like you probably learned more and, and 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 I'm not a lawyer and I'm not a debater so I'm not offended at all okay because this one was more of a case and we're also working with other people and we had a lot more time okay so you think time is very very important right that was a good point. I feel like this time it went by like slower. We like went step by step and we. So it was more systematic, yeah. more organized. Yeah. All right, good. No offense. I'm not offended. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a lawyer, like you said. And I just play one on TV. Law students and lawyers, and they like they've been studying this and they know like what they're talking about and they did like what their professors teach them like in class. Social studies teachers, civics teachers, we are not lawyers. All right, so that's a very valid point. Okay. Um, this was like a real case, like it was actually something instead of Harry Potter or Star Wars. Right, so it was a very light topic, yeah? This is something you could relate to mm -hmm. and happens. Mm -hmm. All right, so here's what we're going to do um, on the way. I'm going to dismiss you in a minute, but I want you guys to get the desks back to the way they were. And ladies and gentlemen, don't be shy. If you'd like to thank or have a quick conversation with the students, please do that. And I'll dismiss you in a minute. Thomas, you can pack it up.